Hello, I am Dr. R. D. Kare, pediatrician from Mumbai. Today we will revise our knowledge about behavior disorders. Behavior disorders are common at all ages, including from infancy to old age. Today we will take them one by one. As if they are not tackled properly in a childhood, sometimes they tend to go in an adulthood also, which becomes difficult to tackle later on. So we'll start with behavior disorders from children and then take it up to adolescents and then up to old, children, old people. Now we'll talk of uh, autism, autistic spectrum disorder as one of the disorders. It usually starts between one to three years of age and initial symptoms are there is no eye contact, they don't smile. Actually, it's a disorder of socialization. So they don't socialize, they don't interact, they don't play with adult children. They may not play with many others, including family members. There is no role play. And then it, sh it should be easy for it to pick it up a little earlier. Most of the time, the parents bring the child to us by one and a half to two years because the child does not speak. Now does not speak is the main point for them to come but the disorder has been there and parents have realized that the socialization is not proper. However, their, their emphasis is mainly on speech. It should be possible for us to pick up the disorder at 12 to 15 months when the child comes to us. Every child come to us at 12 to 15 months. Some time should be spent to find out whether there are any traits of autism. Having seen that, then the further reference is uh, to the developmental pediatrician. Etiology is actually is a developmental disorder and uh, related to chromosomes, genes, and environmental factors, other factors, etc. Therefore, it starts right early in life in utero as well. And as we know, there is something like circuiting, electrical circuiting in our house. So there is something wrong which is going on with the circuiting inside the brain, the synapses, the neurons, the biochemical substances, and that has gone wrong and that is why it presents and perpetuates. And early intervention is often very useful and therefore our attention should be on picking it up early. It is associated with spectrum disorder means there can be somebody who is significantly mentally retarded in, in addition to the autistic behavior or other person, person may have normal disorder for example Asperger's syndrome may have almost normal intelligence though they have some autistic behavior. Now there are other behavior disorders also in children in small children like temper tantrums, eating disorders, sleeping disorders, social disorders but we will pay our attention today only to uh, autistic spectrum disorder. Another disorder that occurs in children is ADHD or attention seeking hyperactive disorder. These children also present at around this time. Often they are hyperactive and they have short attention span and therefore they cannot concentrate on any, ob any object or any subject for a anything more than a short time and therefore they may lead to school scholastic disorder later on and as children parents may find it very difficult to manage them however some of them may be very good in concentration in some areas so that some of them may be very good in studies but may not be very good in other special disorders and early treatment medication and of occupation therapy often good give very good results in these children. Then we come to an older age group and that is adolescence. Plenty of behavior disorders are associated in adult adolescents. You know it's a period of it's a stormy period of life because there are multiple challenges and the child has to manage many studies, parents, peer pressure, sex power problems, etc. We will consider mainly two disorders. One is anxiety disorders and one is depression and many problems come out of that. In anxiety disorders, they are very anxious, irritable and apprehensive about something which may not exist but about which they think it is there and therefore they have irritably short attention span and they may often have 
temper tantrums. One of the things that often is there is acute disorder in which they have tachycardia or they have palpitation, sweating, they may have some abdominal pain, abdominal disturbance that they are hyperactive. They are known as panic disorders. Panic disorders not uncommon in these children. It may it may start acutely in about 5 to 10 minutes. A child may become tremendously anxious. He may experience tachycardia. He may have many behavioral disturbances and usually lasts about a week or a week, I mean for an hour or so, and then they get better and they can recur. So panic disorder is one of the manifestations of anxiety disorders. And anxiety disorders are common not only at that age, but they tend to persist later on. The treatment is mainly management, uh, behavior management and so so psychosocial management of the children. Also associated with that is depressive disorders. And for some, so on some cause, they feel that they will not be able to do that and they get depressed. They have the hallmark is their social withdrawal and then they don't mix here. They don't go to places where otherwise they would have enjoyed to go and it may reflect on their scholastic performance. And this is another depressive disorder. And often there may be a combination of uh, anxiety and, uh, and a depressive disorder. Hyperacidity is a very common manifestation of an anxiety disorder and they may primarily be brought by the parents for hyperacidity while anxiety is the underlying cause in them and they feel anxious for something which is imaginary, something which will happen to me, I may be uh, in difficult circumstances which does not, uh, did not exist but they are imagining that. And lastly we come to old age. And one of the disorders that I may consider here is Alzheimer's. Now Alzheimer's is mainly starts as, uh, I mean it's a disorder of multiple uh, uh, aspects, but it often starts as difficulty in remembering words. Then from words it may go to character and then it may go to other problems. So initially they find it difficult to find words which may go later on to involve other systems and finally it may lead to a little degeneration in the patient and you know that progressively. So we should be able to detect it at the time when they have difficulty in words. Of course the treatment has limitations. Now having seen all that, the idea of giving, uh, ticking, I mean learning together about behavior disorders, uh, many behavior disorders are there at different ages. If they are tackled early, then it, the results are good. Now finally and importantly, some of the behavior disorders which may occur acutely may be a manifestation of an underlying serious disorder. For example, in a person who has suddenly become drowsy, it's an acute manifestation of a behavior disorder against vis-a-vis -vis we saw the chronic manifestation. This person whom he may, other, he is otherwise a normal person and he may suffer from drowsiness, irritability, mood disorder, not able to get up, get confusion and there may be associated symptoms, systemic symptoms may be that and maybe it is a first manifestation of a neurological disorder or metabolic disorder that is coming up. So acute onset of behavior disorder, the message is that acute onset of behavior disorder may be a manifestation of an underlying acute neurological or metabolic disease which is going to follow in a short time and therefore we take a notice of this and take them carefully right at that time. Having said that, I think we have covered the most of important things. There are other things which may not be able to cover this time, but this is enough for us to get sensitization. Thank you very much.